Libre resulted to a number of disruption in manufacturing as well as the global logistics chain. And of course, the Ukraine war, which limited our ability to source a number of essential commodities, especially that were mainly sourced from the, the Baltic region, including Ukraine, Russia, etc., etc. In so many ways, we understand how the COVID pandemic um, disrupted businesses. Um, we had a number of challenges with bots allowing ships to to bring goods um, and be able to discharge them. And because of this, the long queues um, restricted the number of vessels that were available to float along the seas. And noting also that the few, very few vessels that were floating along the seas um, would have preferences to go to other regions um, Sub-Saharan Africa um, faced a lot of challenges and our business community um, was challenged in several ways. One, it was very, very difficult to even get vessels to come down here. And then two, the fates also went up. We also how those significantly impacted the prices of essential commodities. And then the Ukraine war. Um, our flour, fertilizer, even petroleum products come from that region. It could either come from Ukraine or it could come from Russia. In fact, 60% of all diesel Africa consumes comes actually from Russia. So how did the Ukraine war impact it? the availability of these goods and even the costs? In several ways. One, we all know that when the war struck, the number of vessels were restricted flying the Baltic routes. And also, the sanctions that were imposed on Russia led to the challenges with businesses being able to do business with their Russian counterparts. Because of all of these, and also the fact that the Russian businesses were requiring other businesses to trade with them in their own rubble, the, the, the Russian currency. We saw how all of those challenges impacted um, prices of commodities, and we've seen how that has also translated into what the entire globe is going through. The overall global inflation crisis, um, Sierra Leone has been able to um, weather the rock in, in several ways through a number of government interventions. And today, um, we all know that commodity prices continue to, to go up. Um, when the United States realized that um, their own economy was also eating up their banks when crisis, um, the Treasury decided to increase interest rates. I'm sure a good number of people wouldn't understand that, but the impact of increase in interest rate in the United States um, allowed a number of global currencies to depreciate against the US dollars. And when that happens, you see also that smaller economies were even worse affected. Ghana is going through a lot of heat. Sierra Leone is not also insulated. We have tried our best to see how we can ameliorate the impact of all of these global crises, but it's heating up. Um, Nigeria is in a bad shape. We go all over the place. I mean, Guinea is unique in several ways. 
Guinea is currently um, enjoying a boom in iron ore production. Um, the largest iron ore mines has been discovered in Guinea, and that has attracted huge investment. Um, the investment in research alone was over very close to um, $300 million just in prospecting. So if all of that huge amount of money flows into a country, you should understand how it will impact the country's economy. And beyond that, the investment is also coming, even with the mining of the Guinean um, iron ore um, um, is, is so huge and it's impacting the economy favorably. And that's why you have even seen that it's not by magic. It's not that um, the Lyon has not been, or we have not been able to practice enough of the economic um, rationale that should be able to strengthen our economy, that should be able to build the resilience. But Guinea is unique in its, in its fortune that all of these things that have happened recently has supported them. You want to ask what is happening in Liberia? It's also similar. Um, Liberia is also in a, in, a, in a worst case. I mean, so in fact, when you consider prices of commodities in dollar terms, you realize that Sierra Leone is doing far, far better. Sierra Leone is doing extremely well. Um, the price of cement today, wholesale, ranges from 95,000 units to about 120, the wholesale price. I mean, that is from the locally produced cement, which Leo is selling, to the imported cement. If you convert that in US dollars, we're actually trading at wholesale cement between $5.50 to $6. Actually, it's below that because 95,000 or 95 billions is actually like $4.50. Um, the reality of that is the fact that we have been able to bring a number of cement factories in this country. And that competition alone is actually what is having the positive impact on the prices of the commodities. Um, before now, we only had two cement factories or two cement um, companies that were selling cement. Leosem had a very old instrument, um, the bearing and mill, that was almost breaking down every fortnight. And that hindered the production of, of cement. And we had Dangote that was actually bringing in bulk cement and packaging. They were actually not doing anything like grind. So what they were doing was essentially just um, what the importers were doing. But today, after the Ministry of Trade, um, of course the government of Sierra Leone has worked with our private sector players who have brought in about six cement manufacturing companies. And if the price of cement in dollar times today is below six dollars, I think it's essentially um, the effect of what government has been able to do with the private sector operators. If you go to Liberia, cement is way, way above six dollars. In Guinea, it's way, way above six dollars. Um, the testament is the fact that instead of, I mean, Prior to this time when we were in the crisis, um, cement used to come from Guinea to Sierra Leone because the price was relatively better in Guinea. But after this intervention, you see that um, the price in Sierra Leone is far better now than it is in Guinea. Um, so that is the major trust for what this government, I mean, in, in, in addition to all of the goodies that comes when, as a country, we decide to put muscles around industry development. Um, 
you also realize that even our rice is better. Um, if you take the price of rice wholesale, it's around um, 600 bills. If you convert that, that's about 30, 30 something dollars or 30 dollars plus. I know in the market, some people are buying it for 650 so at some points. But when you take a look at that um, and compare what the price of rice is in our neighboring countries, Guinea, Liberia, you realize that the price in Sierra Leone is far better in the long term. I understand that with the broader impact of inflation, um, particularly noting that we all use the Leone, um, even when there has been depreciation, it is definitely impacting all of us. But we're just trying to bring out here that the economic policies of this government uh, in the midst of the global crisis has um, actually strengthened us and um, continuity of this economic policy um, together with, with other planned um, programs which government is putting together to be able to actually pass us over. Um, so today we're here to sign agreements with five industries, five factories. Some of these industries are owned by serial units. What this tells us is that the environment has so improved, the doing business environment has so improved that we are not attracting investment in industry. And the Ministry of Trade has worked very, very hard, both in terms of its policies, in terms of legislations, in terms of programs, to see how we encourage more investment in industry. I can highlight one of few um, breakthroughs that we've achieved through this um, renewed um, interest that we have in industry development. For the first time, um, we're going to have Myro producing plywood in Syria. For the very first time. Um, we've been importing our timber raw. But for the very first time, we're going to have a wood mill that will be processing plywood in this country. And the construction has gone far. For those of you who use the My 91 highway, you'll see the construction going on. And for the very first time, Sierra Leone is going to start producing steel, iron rods, steel bars, nails, um, binding wires, all kinds of iron rods. And also, that same factory, Odav, is going to be producing both um, medical and industrial grade nitrogen and oxygen. So there are a couple of things which um, you clearly see as part of that what we're targeting is one import substitution, one some of those commodities that we consume a lot in this country, we start producing them here instead of depending on what is happening in other countries. The other thing is job creation. Each one of these factories hold the potential to create at least 200 jobs. I'm saying at least. Um, Odav alone is creating over 2,000 jobs. I mean, if you consider everything that they're doing. And these, I mean, those are just two examples of giving. We've seen also how um, our cocoa, which we've been producing and just selling overseas, um, the cocoa beans, Sierra Leone has been known for producing organic cocoa. But all we've been doing is just export the cocoa bean. For the first time, Capital Foods Limited, in its venture to do value addition to cocoa and also to our fruits, is establishing a big factory that is now going to be processing our cocoa bean into cocoa liquor, into chocolates, into a number of other cocoa products. I'm very, very sure this breakthrough 
is going to uh, be one that should be able to see how local players in this country will start looking, transcending from just import-export into actually value addition and manufacturing. When we took over, you remember His Excellency the President mentioned that manufacturing was meagerly contributing to GDP, and it was true. It was less than 3% um, manufacturing was making to GDP. Today, if you check the World Bank um, index, we have succeeded to grow manufacturing's contribution to GDP to two, di two digits, and it's just building up. Um, we have five companies today here. IMS, that's also going to um, look at the manufacturing of cement and construction plastic materials, our tanks, our pipes, our conduit pipes, all of which we've been importing all these years. So we're going to start, I mean, of course there is a company here that's doing the same. We all know Miller. But we need competitiveness in the market. Miller alone has been doing well, but when other companies come in to join them, I think um, it makes um, the, the it, it's, it makes it more merry. We also have Capital Foods, of course, I've just given you the background. And Capital Foods is not only doing a factory in Freetown, they're going to expand the factory that they have in the provinces. So it's all part of our objective of ensuring that we don't only build factories in Freetown, but we're able to build factories in the provinces. I'm sure um, Capital is not the only one that you have in the provinces. We have Global Light Refinery, Sierra Leonean, who went to the United States and was able to look at what he could do put together money to come back to Sierra Leone and invest. He was doing a meal. If you go along the route to go, by the time you reach um, at Bai Masunga, you see a big construction going on there. That's actually global black refining. They're looking at a number of things, extracting palm oil, extracting um, nut oil, and doing a number of other food processing um, manufacturing there. We'll be looking at cassava, we'll be looking at a number of other, I mean the, the limits is dependent on the, the raw materials, the access to raw materials. So um, a Sierra Leonean owned company is Sierra Leonean entirely coming in to invest money it has been able to make in the United States in Sierra. So I think um, um, you are also seeing how much that is going to impact. But beyond that, we have already informed the public of the investment of um, Sierra Tropical um, in Sumbuya that's producing pineapple. And today, Sierra Leone's pineapple is um, part of what is covered on um, on um, the, 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 the foods that is produced in the United States, particularly in, in New York City. Of pizza, that pizza, which is a very favorite food stuff in, in, in the streets of New York. Every restaurant you go, they are doing pizza. Part of what they are producing at Sierra Tropical is actually what is placed on the, the pizza that is produced in the United States. And I'll also inform you that part of what um, Capital Foods is doing has impacted the markets in Europe. I was in Berlin and I was surprised walking into one of the, the supermarkets. I came across cocoa powder written on it, proudly made in Serbia. I mean, the profile which all of these is having on our country, the way it has built the image of this country, is tremendous. A number of people just looking at it, probably made in Sierra Leone, are having calls to Google, where is Sierra Leone? And quite a good number of um, good reviews are coming out of the impact of these um, efforts. We have um, 
five-star food industry that is looking at a number of food products. They're going to be doing tomato paste, tomato ketchup. They'll be doing um, seasoning, seasoning cubes. They'll be doing spaghetti. They'll be those food products we mostly have been importing from other countries. Now going to be produced in Sierra Leone. Um, it's not only going to cut down on how much we've been using forex to um, procure those food items, but the jobs they're creating, the revenue that's going to come through taxes, I think are all the very attractive stories that we have. And of course, SR industry, which is here to also invest in cement. Of course, sorry, I must state here that I made a mistake. IMS is not here for cement. SR industry is actually the company that's here for the cement and the plastic, the construction plastic materials. Um, all of these investments, I'll just go through um, SR industry, for instance, is investing a total of 55 million United States dollars. And it's going to do its investment in various phases. The impact of these are huge, promoting utilization of local available Sierra goods Part of the raw material which is going to be used in the cement production is our own granite dust. I'm sure all of you know of the granite stone when it's broken into bits, into small powders. It's actually part that's going to be used in production of cement. And about between 25 to 30 percent of what you have in cement is actually coming from the granite dust. So it's going to support our small businesses as well who are in the business of um, grinding stones, who are in the business of transporting bulk materials. <coughs> Excuse me. It will enhance competition in the cement industry, etc., etc. For the global light refinery, the investment is quite huge. Of course, it's one of the companies I told you is being established outside of Vietnam and with a total investment of 21 million dollars, um, which will be delivered from grants and co-investment. And the start of the company operations is very critical, and it's desirous to commence within a period of 24 months um, as a manufacturing facility. The construction is already ongoing. Um, we have um, Five Star Foods that's actually also investing Hugely, um, like I was saying, they're going to be producing chicken, maggie, they're going to be producing maggie cubes, beef maggie, tomato maggie, tomato paste, classic maggie, mixed maggie, um, cerulac milk, milk powder, chocolate powder, spaghetti, tomato paste, etc. Et so when you take a look at the wide range of commodities that are going to be manufactured in this country, you realize that it's, it's just wise that Sierra Leone has decided to go into these agreements. And the government of His Excellency the President, with the foresight, has seen the necessity for us to support manufacturing. Um, and of course, IMS intends to do a wide range of um, products, really ranging from juice, smoothies, um, beverages, etc., etc. Um, the total investment here is about $5 million, and that will be done in various spaces. Capital Foods, like I mentioned, is doing a facility in Kerma, and investment um, is around 15 million dollars. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are very sure that it may be coming too late. We may have lagged behind in the industry revolution. But the special determination of His Excellency the President and his government has seen us 
puts this country on the right trajectory, what is referred to as a new direction. A direction that is not going to only see us educate Sierra Leoneans, but ensuring that the education they are going to get while in school and in college, they should be able to utilize um, in the various jobs which these factories are going to create. You need a lot of engineers. When you see all of these factories coming up, you know that we're going to need a lot of engineers, both mechanical, civil, and the like. We're going to need a lot of chemists that should be there to be testing the food quality and the quality of the other products that will be coming from these factories. We're going to need a lot of innovators, people who will be just there looking at product development. A lot of research is going to come. We're going to cut down on our importation and beef up our export. With the emergence of new markets, the ECOWAS trade liberalization scheme, the African continental free trade area, if Sierra Leone does not try to catch up with other countries within the region, Sierra Leone can only end up being a dumping ground. But I'm very sure with these factories that are coming up, they intend to export to other African countries, it's going to make sure that we optimally utilize the very benefits of this new market. The continental free trade agreement, the Indian South South Corporation, the Agoa, and of course, our ECOWAS ETLS, the ECOWAS Trade Liberalization Scheme. It is on this note, ladies and gentlemen, that I wish to introduce the representatives of the various companies that are present here. Representative of Global Light is here. You can just stand up. The representatives of Capital Food. The representatives of IMS Group, Serenium Limited. The representatives of Five Star Food Industry Limited. And the representatives of SR Industry, Serenium Limited. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. And then I think um, members of the press, you've been briefed about uh, the announcement of development through this uh, uh, signing uh, today and the impact on Sierra Leoneans. And so, therefore, we now start by calling the companies. As I you called, the representative will come forward by the Minister to you sign this um, agreement. As uh, you may recall, last week Thursday, Parliament, when this was ratified. And so we'll begin with the, the five star. We'll take a seat. Down to the signing. You pause for the camera. Now the five star industries limited proposes to invest in uh, an excess of fifteen million United States dollars. And is uh, contemplating on the completing construction and commissioning of the factory between 12 to 24 months from the date of ratification of this agreement. And uh, most of the products they intend to uh, be doing a plus. The way of production and marketing will include specifically maggots, shrimps, chicken maggots, beef maggots, milk maggots, milk, milk powder, chocolate powder, etc. 
And so the country will benefit from this investment in terms of employment creation, poverty reduction, infrastructure development. Thank you very much. And then next to come will be a capital food. <laughs> Our capital food limited was established in 2014 as a non-alcoholic manufacturing company, mainly to produce quality non-alcoholic beverages that include fruit juice, drinks, uh, cocoa liquor from cocoa beans, oil grown in Sierra Leone, as well as spring water of various sizes. The company has invested more than 15 million United States dollars to set up a manufacturing uh, company here in Sierra And the company owns as well a well equipped and multi purpose uh, state of the art processing plant to produce non alcoholic drinks in packages of 1.5 ml, cocoa mass in packages, etc. And then the Ministry of Trade and Industry on behalf of the government has engaged this uh, capital foods to extend its operation from importation of food and non alcoholic beverages. And it's expected that uh, the benefits that will be derived will include the employment sector itself in country. And later, you, if all five companies oppose the minister, don't worry, you will have a shot of all five. We now call on IFS. The IMS Group Limited is acting on its own name, and that is all present or future affiliates represented by the chief executive here. And this company is limited liability company established by the companies act and registered under the laws of Sierra Leone. And this company existed and uh, operated in merchandise including but not limited to selling imported products such as flour, rice, biscuits, etc. The company has acquired six warehouses situated in country. Um, there are several benefits that we're going to get from this um, company, as highlighted by the minister. And we also call our own Serenian brother, Saad Levy, of Global Light Refinery. Global Light Refinery is a solely civilian non private limited liability company established under the Companies Act and Sailing. And then um, the refinery will be established in both districts, the uh, minister just explained, and then we will use our farm carrier as input for manufacturing of not oil. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, air operations will be divided into phases. Phase one, it uh, will take up to 9,550 square meters of land, and this too will be including building of 3,600 square meters of fish farming and food. There's more we can know about this company, and uh, that will be a good surprise. Thank you so very much. And uh, to sign the uh, last but not the least uh, is uh, SR Industries represented by Desmond uh, Koro. Mm -hmm. Now, SR Industries is a limited liability company established under the Companies Act. And uh, the plan of capital investment of 55 million United States dollars. And the company will 
is established uh, as a cement manufacturing and grinding mill. And then the operations will be divided into various phases. Phase one, focusing on importation and construction. And phase two, involving the opening of the primary cement processing and grinding plants in Freetown. And phase three will involve the completion and processing of a grinding plant, a plastic manufacturing plant in the western area. And uh, it will be beneficial to sell it because it will promote the utilization of locally available cell goods in the industrial and manufacturing sector. And there will be external activities for local cell union suppliers of goods and uh, relevant ancillary services such as transportation, supplies, warehousing, and others. It will promote human capacity and technology transfer to cell unions. Thank you very much. And so, with that, we call on the five representatives to please uh, put for the press. clarification because we expect you to serve as witnesses to take this to your respective communities amidst the electionary process in our country. Yes, we're moving towards development. And in enhancing development, the factual story must be told. So if you have any question, you please by a show of hand, and let's leave it too much of preambles. Go straight to the issue by identifying your media institution and the name of your very self. Mr. Minister, your name and media institution, sir. It's on. I'm Mohammed Kamara of the Washington Paper. Mr. Minister, I'm going to ask you how many factors do we have in Spain before April? for 2018. And how many factories do we have now from April 2018 before to uh, April 4, 2023? So has there been increase or decrease? That's one question, please. So I have another question, say, please, bear with me. Okay, I will allow you for this last one. Uh, what progress will this secretary have um, um, in, in uh, the present uh, uh, impact that Dola has in our uh, comments. I didn't understand that one. I don't have a minister. Can I come in again? Go again. We all know that with 33 African currencies that no one is international. The whole thing hooked up by Dola. What I'm asking is, what progress would we have in terms of recognizing our currency from the signatures of all companies coming in? This minister does not sync with you. But all right. It's noted. Thank you. I'm going to ask now it's clear, sir. So just a copy of the, the, the minister's speech for the... For you can make speech for the press kit. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. I'm not saying that it's my name. Deputy Manager, Editor of the Editor of this report. Mr. Minister. Speak up. Yeah. Mr. Minister. You know, you have outlined all the achievements that uh, your ministry and the government of uh, uh, President Biro has made over the years. But what do you say to the Sinaloneans or the people who say that uh, you are making too much of excuses? Um, 
I think that sounds a bit, uh, I'm, the, I'm the judge here, the presiding justice. That sounds a bit outside my scope for now. You can talk after this session with the minister. Let's leave it our scope on the agreement. I mean, the agreement. That's the topical issue for today. That question can be outside after this. Yeah. Hi, I'm the NIO Justice Minister. What is the duration, the time duration, in terms of implementation of this disagreement, which your ministry have signed with these companies? I think there are various, they very but he will tell you some are 36 months. Okay, uh, another bite, a lady? Uh, we're talking about gender, I see you. Uh, we're talking about gender, I like seeing women contribute now because. Now, we'll say this time, woman, right? So, we'll be pointing at women now if you don't ask your quota system. Okay, um, um, let me take you. Adi, me, please. My name is Ayodele. My name is Ayodele Nicole, and I work with the exclusive industry bank at this avenue. This minister will be just going to sign five new contracts with five new companies in the county. How much revenue are we expecting from this county? In totality. Yeah, for all of this, yeah, every year, how much revenue? Yes. To, do you monitor this company to make sure that they provide nice and uh, benefits for their workers? That's the labor sector. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if there is a lady, I will give a concession, or otherwise, the next round. Is there a lady? No, not yet. Not yet. We need to negotiate this because they move their bill, and so now we go for <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, Let them be saying yeah, something. Yeah. Let them be quiet. Okay. Honorable Minister, can you use the mic in front of you? Oh, after the next round, sir. Sorry, sir. Thank you very much. Um, of course, we are proud to say that we've been able to bring in factories um, since 2018. And I can count around 28 that we've been able to work with. Um, some of them have seen transformations, expansions. Like for instance, when we came, um, we met um, um, the factory that is producing palm oil. They had a small scale mill. We were able to support them to double their production. Um, with that software, we also have supported the sunbird um, industry as producing ethanol, and in a way what the government tried to do was to see how we support them to sell the ethanol locally. It's a high-graded ethanol, and they were able to be doing export as well. We're seeing the support we're giving to um, Dulax Manufacturing, that's now doing the vegetable oil and soap. We're seeing the support we're giving to Sierra Leone Flour Mill. It was down by the time we came. We resuscitated it today. Um, we've seen the number of brown new big capacity silos that are going up in, in around the ports area. We've seen how we've supported um, the, the guys that are supposed to come. Sonoko. Sonoko is not only doing um, a meal for flour, they're also going to do um, the manufacturing of um, bakery equipment. And we've seen how much we've done to a number of Maquis we supported today, Maquis and a number of other cement factories that we've supported. Of course, SR industry that we're just doing is another cement factory. Um, we have Roxham, we have Ransom, we've got other um, factories that Soko. But Soko is establishing not only a cement grinding mill, they want to develop a small jetty. The bulk goods, particularly um, um, clinker and mine. And they are doing all of this investment outside the Western Urban Princeton. We're seeing what Maki is doing at around um, Hastings, um, and the production there is quite huge. We've seen also some other giving, we're giving to other food factories. I mean, Capital this year, five, five star food this year. Um, um, and of course, uh, Global Light, 
general beverages, American beverages, gold tree, um, and we've seen this product given also to other factories that are into timber value addition. Um, Myro is there. So the number is, is just there. And quite a good number of them um, are not only in Freetown here, but they're also in the provinces. So they'll be providing jobs for our youths and other um, Sierra Leoneans in the, in the provinces. How is this impacting on Forex? I mean, it's not going to be automatic, but the fact that we are bringing in factories that are producing what we consume, that is going to cut down the need or the demand on Forex to import these same goods. Let me just let you understand this. By the time we took over, um, a good number of importers were bringing in vegetable oil. And every year we're spending close to $20 million to bring vegetable oil. When we passed the agreement with Julax and, and GC, automatically the importation of vegetable oil dropped down to zero. And today we are exporting. When they export, they repatriate for us as well. And the fact that we've cut down on the demand for forex to bring in vegetable oil is also positive in terms of how we are able to stabilize our currency. So I'm very, very sure the impact is going to be huge. It will take time to finally have what will be felt by the, the, the broader public. Um, we've outlined the achievements of this. In fact, that's just achievement in terms of factories. Today, I was just talking with the commissioner, the CEO for the Consumer Protection Commission. I'm sure we all would agree that there is need for us to um, strengthen regulation around value for money to protect the interests of consumers. Um, that um, commission is going to ensure that all of these people that we're signing these agreements are able to make strong commitments and lead by those commitments when it comes to quality of the goods that we have in the market. And I'm sure that was so many other legislative um, instruments that we passed in parliament, the policies, we've done the, the special economic zone policy, which is going to ensure that we establish economic zones around the country. We've done the cooperative, we've reviewed the cooperative policy, which is going to ensure that we're able to give more life to rural economic development because the cooperative malls are in those areas. We've done a couple of other policies that we've seen. I mean, the revised industry policy that is giving all of this energy and supporting the private sector. We're now having regular public-private dialogue, which has never been happening in this country. We listen to the um, private sector the businesses. We know, we try to know their constraints, and then we mainstream them into actual government policies, see what government programs can be able to address some of those challenges which um, the private sector is facing. Um, this plus so many other things which the Ministry of Trade has been able to do, I think that's some of the achievements. So for those who are saying that we are making excuses, well, if that is true, then it's not only Sierra Leone that's making the excuse. Guinea should also be making the excuse. Liberia should be making the excuse. The United States should be making the excuse. Because as I speak to you, rice in the United States is far more expensive than it is in Sierra Leone. If you go to the United States and do the conversion, we're not producing petroleum products. In the United States, they're producing petroleum products. But that's still, we all see the impact that all of these global crises is having on the global price of petroleum products. I mean, if you take other commodities which are considered essential, the same is happening to them. I think what I will only call on sale particularly with what the president is planning in the second term, that we're going to now focus on agriculture, increase agricultural productivity. I think that's only going to help us get more factories because more raw materials are going to develop in this country, more factories are going to have. And I'm sure, I mean, 
Um, Sierra Leoneans are quite anxious, but we're heading in the right direction. The dividends of all of these investments are definitely going to sink sooner than later. Thank you. And um, the duration, the duration, I mean, the, the agreements are starting right away. The implementation is starting right away. We have obligations as government to these companies. They also have obligations. For instance, all of them in these agreements have limitations um, with regards when they should be started, construction. We are going to be following them. We are asking them to be giving us the development plans. We have set up the monitoring group that will be going around. Of course, there is a parliamentary oversight committee that's also supposed to be going around to see how far these um, factories are, are, are working to start manufacturing. And I'm sure uh, most of them have in them um, time for construction, around 24 to 36 months. So I'm very, very sure with all of what we are doing together with these, they should be able to um, get on and running latest in the, in the in first one year and others will be coming up in the second year or so. Um, if you take a look at all of the agreements, the agreements require these companies to be compliant with all existing laws in Sierra Leone. NASID, environmental laws, um, local content laws, they should be doing the corporate social responsibilities. Uh, I want to just assure you that as a government, a very responsible one, we'll make sure that we're able to monitor their compliance uh, performance to all of these provisions that we have in the agreement and we'll make sure that it comes to the benefit of the people of this country. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Let's take the last round now. And after that, we call it close. Can I start from the young man at the back that was uh, initially asking? Is he gone? Has he gone to bed? He's giving me the opportunity. Uh, okay, okay. Decline. Yes, yes sir. Thank you very much. I'm somebody in development watch there. Mr. Minister, can all of this intervention address the bread and water issue for the Sierra Leoneans? And um, for the investors, we want to say thank you for your intervention and um, it's welcoming from Sierra Leoneans. We will popul popularize your industries and your, the name of your industries will be on the newspapers coming this week, so don't be surprised about that. It's the own that civil society and journalists can do in promoting your business. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. With regards to the employment gender policies in your industries, are there any gender policies? I, they cannot talk to you now directly, but the minister has spoken about that. You know, through your question to the minister. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Minister, what about the power supply for the operationality of this company, operationalization, operationalization of these companies. How I'm guaranteed this power supply I will, I will get. And alternative arrangements, are there any alternative arrangements? For me, my concern is the power supply for the success of your business. Power supply. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Kamara, you want another bite? I hope it can be just one. That's my profession, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, one. Minister, 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 in 2022, <laughs> Nigeria is in the diaspora investing 98 billion euros in the GDP in Nigeria, my co. Uh-huh. And in Sierra Leone? In Sierra Leone. We've got quite a lot of objections about the president traveling abroad, and we could begin to see... Well, how does that come to Sierra Leone? ...of some millennials coming back home to set up their own company. Back home. Like the case of that young man who's about to set up a company in Kenya. How hopeful are we that more and more will be coming back home when the, the SNP is voted for in 2023? Thank you very much, uh, sir. Mr. Kamara, <laughs> I'm also the presiding judge here. If the Texas is not a, uh, you know, 
connect two things, flying and this. If you're talking about Sierra Union contribution to our country, you are in place. Thank you very much. And now, lady. When you speak like a man now, raise your voice. <laughs> All right, signing these agreements are very essential. How want to know how strong the monitoring system for these industries to produce quality goods and products that are up to international standard. Okay, best practice. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Minister, uh, you talked about employment and let's say employment rate. Of course, you are aware of the gender gay week of class in parliament. Um, how will you ensure that your ministry relates with some of these companies in ensuring that they comply to the agenda by making sure that at least they have women at the top management level? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think my man has got the line he missed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Uh, my name is Jalosmane. I'm good. Specifically, Minister, I want to know the cost of each product from this company that will be sold to selling unions. How will this affect the ordinary man? Is it clear? <laughs> the cost per project or per company? Per product? I think later i'll give you a press kit to know the valuation of uh, each of those company the investment as per product i'm sorry sir as per product that will be determined when they started their operations right taking into consideration one of the questions they asked about labor taking into consideration electricity taking into consideration water and government is getting to provide the necessary conducive environment for operations. So they will tell you about the total cost for now, but not the product as how much chocolate will cost. I'm sure they will not. All right, so with that, all right, Minister, over to you. Sorry, you had civil society here. We've opened up the press briefing also to civil society. So um, it's not speaking on behalf of journalists to say you are going to write, but. However, speak for yourself, okay? Thank you very much. Um, the question, how is this development going to address the very important issues? I mean, a long way. A long way. Um, it's going to definitely have impact on the jobs they're creating. The number of people who are going to have um, employment is definitely going to, to increase and that's going to address very important issues. I have already told you that one of the reasons why um, vegetable oil is not being imported into Syria anymore is because it, it makes no business sense. The vegetable oil that we are selling in Syria is far cheaper than what is coming from other countries. And today we are actually exporting our vegetable oil to the Gambia, to Senegal, to Liberia. And I can tell you for free, the prices of vegetable oil in these countries is far more than the price of vegetable oil in Syria. I think that's a very important issue. Um, if you take a look at what we're doing with all the cement process, that's a very important issue. If you can buy cement at wholesale in Sierra Leone currently between 4.5 United States dollars to six dollars, while in Guinea and Liberia it's being sold above six dollars, that's a bread and butter issue. Um, all I will say is bread and butter issue is not just limited to government. Um, your personal um, efforts to make sure we are able to work hard. We've seen people who get jobs and after a week or so decide to leave the job, say, ah, it's difficult to this job. So for those people, I don't think government will do much in addressing their own bread and butter issues. But I can tell you that these are all part of the economic development plan that this, that this government is putting together. And as we progress, 
with our human capital development, um, the need for job creation is going to be rife. Um, if you have a population of mostly uneducated people without jobs, the crisis you have is going to be far less than to have a population of educated people without jobs. So, so what we're doing and the efforts of um, supporting human capital development in the country, the free quality education, which is the um, supported by this government, but we cannot try to work very hard in making sure that we have enough jobs in this country for our people, then definitely we're going to align ourselves into much more deeper crisis. Um, the diaspora is coming. More and more people are showing interest. We've seen Desmond there is a partner in SR industry that's coming to develop um, the cement factory. I mean, except if you want to say, think that maybe the Desmond name is a Nigerian name, that's Desmond Kurum, 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 Kurum. Yeah. It's a Sierra Leonean that is partnering with um, a group of other investors. And you can see that part of our investment policy is also looking at how uh, Sierra Leoneans um, work with other um, international investors. But besides, all of these people here, uh, Sierra Leoneans themselves. Um, some of the people you are seeing here are either third or fourth generation um, Lebanese people who have been here, they were born here, they yeah. went to school here. Yeah. They can talk Creole better than you. They have Sierra Leonean wives yeah. sitting here. That's great. So I think um, if you have all of that happening, and I'm sure. Um, the indication is that the diaspora is starting to see. You don't need to go bring them here. Come and come and take jobs. Because if you bring them to just come and take jobs, then it's going to have impact on our outflow of foreigners. Some of them are not going to come with their families. Their families are going to stay here. But if you encourage them, create the environment. To allow them to come and invest the monies that they've been able to make out there, then you can see that they're going to immensely contribute to our economic development. We are going to monitor them, definitely. Um, the membership mechanism is, is tough. I we just conducted one about three months ago. Myself and my team, the Minister of Labor, local content agency and the Ministry of Environment went round a good number of these factories and we actually when they are announced we did not inform anybody that we were coming. We went there upon being there we told them that we're just here to look around. Those that were Defaulting on the number of, most of them were actually compliant in a number of ways. There were those that were defaulting. And we told them that no. In fact, we invited them to the offices, we had engagements with them, we told them that oh, you need to improve on XYZ, and we told them that we'll be revisiting the facility again. So you can see that there is a robust monitoring mechanism. And the, the Parliamentary Committee on Trade also does oversight on this. Um, finally, um, how do we ensure that they're able to produce quality products very soon, very, very soon, um, will be coming out with one of the big achievements we've made with the Serial Standards Bureau in setting up strong food laboratory, laboratories and also other testing facilities. And we are also, well, we just completed the management certification uh, process. And that is to tell you that we now have the capacity to be able to go around. And of course, the formation of the Consumer Protection Commission, which has more teeth to bind 
because we're not only looking at standards, we're looking at the interest of the consumer. And we have very, very solid um, serial elements, very strong serial elements, strong backgrounds to be able to drive the, the, the commission. I'm sure things are only going to get better. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Honorable Minister. And um, on this note, uh, I look forward to it, uh, your uh, team here and all of you present from the various industries. You can have a photo with the Honorable Minister as history. Right? And the members of the front stage, you can stay and uh, have some discourse with Nancy after this question. Okay? Yes, let's take a good photo with the minister. You go to the um, ladies and gentlemen, we have just witnessed um, the signing of um, five agreements with five companies to operate um, so, um, so we have come to an end to this press um, briefing. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.